today I wanted to talk to you on how I found my way back to fiction writing. So personal story, I have not written from scratch a draft of a new fiction novel since the fall of 2019. Yes, I have been publishing since then. I published four books. Uh, one of them was a book that I had through a traditional publishing house that I republished myself as an indie author. I had a book that I was trying to get traditionally published, but eventually it became an indie book. And it's also one of the top performing audiobooks on my channel if you're interested at all in psychological thrillers. I'll put that uh, link in the description and also in the cards. And I have also written two nonfiction books about the publishing industry, but since last year, since 2023, I just have not been able to sort of get my juices flowing with my fiction books. There's a couple reasons for that, and I want to sort of discuss that in case you're struggling with any of these issues and some ways that I have found to find my way back to writing because spoiler alert I am writing a new book I have a plan to consistently write and publish I have four thriller novels so far that I want to publish and I am making my way back to writing so these things that I'm going to discuss have really helped me um, as a mom and as a busy uh, full-time worker as well uh, balancing all of that plus my writing so one of the biggest um, sort of gaps looking at why I haven't been able to write fiction from scratch, a brand new story, one that was not already done before, was, you know, we went through 2020, 2021, and um, a lot of things changed, and my kiddo is growing up, and I did a lot of videos previously talking about when kiddo was younger and I had longer stretches of time to write, but now that kiddo is getting older and sort of needing my attention in a more developmental way, uh, mental development, and I just love spending time uh, with kiddo so, so much, and that has sort of been a hindrance for me to sort of focus my writing time. Obviously, I have no regrets about being a mom, but it is a lot more difficult when you do have children to worry about as well, and also a full-time job. So I'm still technically writing from around 5 to 7 every morning, Monday through Friday. Um, I usually don't write on the weekends when I'm spending time with kiddo. I like to have very strategic blocks of time for my family and for my writing and for my work and all the other stuff that I like to do. So a lot of it has been adjusting to a new sort of normal. Um, as kiddo was an infant going into being like a toddler, these switches were happening more frequently and I was like, okay, I'm in a new set of developmental stage and I need to adjust this way. But it has been sort of the same for a longer stretch of time for me, the schedule, things like that, and then all of a sudden this year has been sort of a shift. Schedules and things like that and participating in different things. I sort of forgot that these types of things happen and I had to sort of find my way back to what is a new normal for me when it comes to my writing. So when it comes to writing for me specifically, a lot of that is creative input. So that's reading, uh, watching, I write psychological thrillers, so I love watching true crime and other psychological thriller movies and television shows, and I wasn't doing that. So my days and nights were sort of so busy with trying to figure out what was happening and trying to balance everything that I wasn't doing the things I needed to do to get back to the writing. So it wasn't really until I started reading again, and this sounds so silly, it really does, but I am a firm believer that like you can't really Really write unless you read. Now I'm sure someone will say I don't need to read to write. That's perfectly fine with you. But based on my knowledge and the many author friends that I have and many author conferences I've been to where people say the same exact thing, I need to be reading to be writing. And it wasn't until recently when I read a book, I read The Inmate by Frieda McFadden. It's my first Frieda McFadden book and I found the ideas all of a sudden flowing. And at that same time, I was watching um, a couple of Netflix documentaries. I really love Netflix documentaries on um, true crime because I feel like they're very visual and storytelling like appealing, and that was a lot of fun. So I recently watched uh, American Nightmare and Lover, Stalker, Killer. 
I would recommend them if you like that sort of thing. So it was a combination of understanding what I needed internally. I haven't just put aside the time for myself to do that and I found that you know when I was taking kiddo to after school activities or any sort of activities. I would just sit there and scroll my phone, playing games, getting like quick dopamine fixes. Um, and this silly little uh, trick I played on myself was that like, I have books. I have, you know, books behind me. I have some thriller books that I've purchased from my auto buy author, Alice Feeney. But I wasn't actually reading and for some reason I couldn't even like pick up the book. I was I was having such a resistance to doing that. So what I sort of tricked myself into was just getting books from the library and having that sort of deadline of finishing them by the time that I needed to finish them that they were due back. It worked. For some reason it worked for me. So you know having that sort of deadline for myself to read has been helpful. Um, and just making sure that I read something, doesn't have to be every day, but like one of the activities that, that I bring kiddo to every week, just take the book with me. Um, you know, I do crochet as well. I was taking my crochet with me, but I do like little plushies and I have to bring like a lot of stuff. I have to bring eyes and I have to bring the yarn and I have to bring stuffing and it just got like to be too much. So I've just been bringing a book with me and even if I read one chapter and then scroll my phone, well at least I read one chapter because I know it's super important, something that I have to do. So if, there, if you're stuck, um, make sure that you're giving yourself that creative well-filling time, however it is that you need to do it. I won't blanket statement say you have to read, but I want to say that you probably should be reading, um, whether it's in your genre or not. For me, I don't have an issue reading my genre while I'm writing my genre. It's actually very idea generate, generating for me. It's not like I'm taking ideas from the book I'm reading. It's just creating the opportunity for me to think about my story more in a more creative way. One thing that I want to mention too is sort of that time management aspect of it, um, of writing. Now I do reserve the 5 to 7 a.m. time slot for me to do my writing. It's worked for me for I would say close to 10 years now, um, so I have that sort of time put aside for myself, but the idea for me is make sure that's focused time. So a lot of times I would wake up and not feel like writing. Some days I don't. I'm not a consistent writer. I don't write every single day. That's never really worked for me. I'm very like cyclical, so I'll like do the writing and then do the editing and marketing and stuff like I'll use that time wisely but when it comes to writing specifically having the time put aside to do it and making sure that I do it so there's that consistency sort of in that time frame where I do have to do the work but making sure that for me it's using that time properly if that makes sense so time management for me is more about creating that environment, that wrangling that time that I set aside for the writing and things that I do to help, you know, sort of immerse myself. Um, I've talked about this before on my channel. I have specific playlists that I, that I listen to. Um, now it's really been like a Riverdale sort of, um, it's season two Riverdale score. And that's really helped with um, previously with um, editing and you know sort of rewriting her buried lives, and also into this one as well. So I don't know. That's just like my go-to. If you have a go-to, um, also too, I do writing sprints with friends in the morning. So I go between two different friends throughout the week, and we hop on Zoom or Streamyard and we write uh, or we work. And having that accountability is helpful. Um, if you need that kind of accountability but maybe don't have someone to do it with, definitely jump on um, writing sprints. I have some on my channel previously. If you want to just jump in and watch, you know, rewatch something, sort of setting aside that time is super helpful with um, consistently writing and using your writing time for writing and not other things that you, you know, maybe want to be doing, but like you need to put aside the time to write. So another huge thing of resistance that I found was too much input. So this has nothing to do with like creative well-filling or anything, but in 2023 I attended 
two really fantastic conferences. One of them was the Nink Conference and one of them was 20 Books in Vegas. While I probably won't go back to Vegas this year, um, for I just didn't like the atmosphere, not the conference, just being in Vegas in general, that was not for me. I found so much trouble with sleeping and it was just so overwhelming. So too much input in that. These are wonderful conferences for professional writers and it was just too much information for me. We were talking about Kickstarter, we were talking about all of these different ways of publishing. It was just too much. So like every little step I took toward my book was like, but what if I need to do this? And what if I need to do that? And it was very much like a marketing standpoint. And I know early on in my career, when I was talking to authors who were not published, it was very much so like, I have an idea for a book, but what do I do about releasing it? And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You need to bring it back a little bit and you need to focus on the words. You can't market a blank page. You can't market an unfinished book. So I had to remind myself of that and really just focus on getting the draft done. Yes, I had people, my friends sort of like wrangling me back and that is fantastic and I loved it so much. Make sure that if you are having resistance with writing, focus on the part of the process that you're at and don't worry about the rest. And if you need sort of a way to take your mind off of those things, you know, you're like, oh, I really wanna do a Kickstarter. Take a notebook, a dedicated notebook that you have to your author career and write down Kickstarter. When I finish my book, I will research Kickstarter. When I, you know, have the book ready to go, I will put it on Kickstarter. Just wait until you get to that point to get to that point. Focus on the writing if you're having trouble with it and that's all you need to focus with. Things are gonna be changing all of the time and they do and they changed so much since the last book I published, which was 2022. Write the book and then you can worry about all the rest. Another thing that I love to talk about is decluttering. So when, because I work from home, I have a remote position in publishing and I also, you know, publish my own books. I am home a lot. So my space, really needs to be quite tidy and a non-distraction for me and if it's messy and cluttered and things like that it can throw me off the rails. I do have a period of nesting right before I write a book. It's silly but I usually have to take on like a big decluttering or organizing project in my home before I can start writing my book. It is so weird but it is something that I constantly do. So decluttering is super helpful, whether that's physically decluttering my space that I'm working in, um, if I need to rework any of my digital spaces, or just decluttering my mind, getting everything out of my mind, like I said, having a notebook nearby, talk about publishing plans, things like that. That is super helpful for really concentrating on the writing, getting everything else out of my head, making sure my space is nice and perfect, or at least workable. And if you are interested in more tips about that, I do have uh, from my Chaos to Control program on my channel for free on YouTube. Um, I can link those specific videos for you to look at and if you need sort of help, you know, getting started decluttering your mind or your space. And this next tip is sort of linked to getting too much input from outside sources, and that's comparisonitis. So one thing that I sort of had to do when I was feeling not wanting to to write, unmotivated, is I sort of had to stop inputting other authors. So I sort of stopped looking at Instagram. Um, I stopped watching YouTube videos of other authors, which I, I tend to go through anyway. I tend to like call and like binge um, frequently when it comes to the media that I input, sort of looking at other people publishing and being a, a little further along than I have and than I was at the time. Um, I still have all the books that I've published behind me and I've ghostwritten over 40 novels. So like I'm still an author and I had to have a friend sort of remind me of that no matter if I'm currently writing or not. And looking at other people's journey when they're much further along than a first draft was not healthy for me so I had to sort of cut that out for a little bit and all of these things sort of decluttering my space making sure my my mind was decluttered create a uh, refilling my creative well setting aside and actually using the time that I put aside for writing and cutting out all the rest 
has really been super helpful for me to start writing again and I feel really good about the process I feel like I found myself again so if you are going through this um, you are not alone and it probably will happen to me again at least a couple more times until kiddo is old enough to be out of the house and then I sort of have that time to myself back um, more time in my day back for myself but that's not gonna be for a number of years and I can't go forward with regret um, or thinking that like what if things were different or just being completely delusional about my time and Pretending that I have more than I do. I try to be re very realistic and um, This is sort of where my mindset has been going. So if you are struggling at all with this um, And you want to discuss it more let me know in the comments below I'd love to sort of help you figure out how to find your way back to writing because it's certainly a great place to be once you are back into it. So I hope this video was helpful. If so, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, feel free to subscribe. Um, here on my channel, I sort of talk about many different things when it comes to being a creative person and a creative parent um, in general, because I think it's it can be quite difficult to juggle all of the things, even if you aren't a parent. Uh, but I'm just sharing my situation with you and hoping that I can help you at all fulfill your writing dreams and fulfill the publishing dreams uh, that you've always had or that you wish to have in the future. So that is all for now and hopefully I'll see you next week.